So this is all about pigeons. Today we have with us John Cordova. John Cordova has been racing, well, he's been taking care of pigeons for over 60 years. He's flown in the Belgium races and he's flown pigeons in Belgium for a while. He's won second place average in 100 member Belgian Speed Club, won second in the World Ace 200, won the 2005 San Diego Triple Crown with the Golden Imbric and many more in the sport over the 68 years he's been in it. He also has the champion couple, Bonnie and Clyde. So, John, thanks for coming out today and talking with us. Sure, good evening. I kind of wanted to, you know, well, geez, especially with all the all the years of experience you have, I'm sure there's a lot you can talk to us about. Has, has it always been racing pigeons with you first off, or what kind uh, of got started you into out, it? I started out with commies. I saw some underneath the viaduct under a highway, <laughs> and uh, – Got those and put on my buddy's law house, which he built out of old army um, ammo boxes. And there was two inches of wheat on the floor. Then I was driving along and I with my uncle. Somebody had pigeons there for 25 cents each. So my bo uncle bought me two. And there was a white one with just a little black on a tail. He had some, he wanted 75 cents for that one, but he wouldn't go for it. I ended up starting there. And then I had him in the backyard. The guy that owned chicken farm next to my dad's place so i had pigeons and i got started in the homers so i was within uh, commies and some showbirds for a short period of time six months and the rest of the time is only with uh, racing homers those prices are uh <laughs> those i don't know 75 cents i, I might have forked out for that today you well, would I have you, I, I'm, I'm, pigeons, I, Phil. that was too much but wow. man there's sure a big difference now <laughs> yeah it is now yeah now it's uh the million dollar pigeons and everything else so things have really changed in a short time well yeah you can't get anything cheap anymore you get cheap birds everywhere but you know what's your chance of winning you've got to have champions or or yeah. nothing i've done a lot of time on the bottom of the pigeon list so i know how to lose it's been a long haul and i've had, met a lot of good friends and had a lot of good birds a lot of things happened I can you, talk pigeons day and night. Just ask my wife. <laughs> do you do you belong to any uh, pigeon race club in your area? No, no, I've long given up on that. I flew up in Ogden for years and years, and mm -hmm. and I flew in Las Vegas. I was there for a while. <clears throat> I even flew pigeons in Belgium. Belgian pigeon sport, which is the Bel racing pigeon, is the national sport of Belgians. Like in the United States, it's ball. Over there, right. it's uh, pigeon racing. Everybody's got pigeons. Every little town, you, there's a pigeon club going there. I went back a couple of years ago. I was there, but when I was there in Belgium, I was hobnobbing with all the big boys. Jansen Brothers, we visited them a couple of times. German Imbrecht, Willie Monnier, all the big boys. Uh, Rusens, Mark Rusens brought some back. But, you know, I've had some good birds. After a while, they get old and die. So How many can, birds do you keep? I've got about... 40 out there so i'm not a big loft flyer and i have a uh, loft special for bonnie and clyde under a polygamous system and then i use all the other ones or feeders for those two there's some good ones in there i got spandaloons and that's the best you can get and some rick nanez birds a lot in new jersey name do you send any birds out for one loft races at all yes that's what i do now oh okay okay that's what i do now i've done that for years I've got out. Uh, I've got uh, about twenty-five birds out this year. Golden Valley, Tar Heel, the big Hoosier. That's huge. Mm -hmm. A couple of others I've forgotten. Put some to Tim. And I sent some good ones. But you know, it's like racehorses. Because you got a pigeon off of the pigeon off of pigeon, doesn't mean you're going to win. It's a, what about if they got really good eyesight? You know, I get a lot of that. I've judged birds in different shows and stuff and, you know as long as it's got an eye <laughs> <laughs> but i i look at i look at the eye but i'm looking for health and then white nose waddle white eye sear a glisten in the eye and that's what you're looking for plus feather if you don't watch those things you're you're finished you got to have the, be the best ones so, so what what is it in the feather that you're looking for oh man like clyde he's a checker and he just glistens, iridescence across the chest, and his feathers are, are a beautiful checker. And 
the ends of his wings and tail just you turn him upside down and look at his breast and he doesn't look like a, an older bird you know how they get gray he looks like he's ready to race it's gorgeous bonnie's nice too but not nearly like him he's something so when you were racing in club races did you practice any type of like widowhood or was it just a feed thing to get him back fast or i flew know? widowhood yes I, uh, my dad built a great big loft i flew it's north of salt lake widowhood uh, some year old lions in Belgium, I had them up on the top attic. Everybody over there flies in the top attic. So I flew natural over there. They're flying against those guys. It's unbelievable. There's a guy next next to me, Jean-Claude Flamand. He beat the club. He won the club. He's my neighbor. He usually got five birds before I got one. From young birds, I yeah, did all right. I, you were I, keeping birds in the attic? In the attic. Everybody over there did. You know, nice okay. to take a tile off and stick my head out and watch them for birds. It was a quite, <laughs> ex quite experience. But so, yeah, I've flown, flown the widowhood. So were you, when you had the, with those attic setups then, are you guys hauling feed and water up like a little ladder to, you know, through the yeah, it, attic Yeah, all the European houses are made of brick. The property is expensive, so they build up one layer to, the, I think our, our kitchen was in the second floor and you went up to the bedrooms and another bedroom and then up to the attic yeah they're all the same being over in belgium and then coming back over here what are some of the biggest differences that you see that they're doing with their loft setups and loft management than what you see going on over here in the states well in the states is all one loft race now everything's leading towards that mm -hmm. it's expensive but that's what it was over there quality of the birds real high you know they're just getting into the one loft thing Quality's high. And over there, over here, it's all young bird flying because the Americans are impatient. They want to win now. But over there, they fly on as young birds, but then the best cocks are safe for widowhood. They're not hardly raced at all. And then they don't even work them until they're two year olds hard. That's the difference right there. So those European birds come over here and they're not bred for short young bird races. And so they don't do very well. Now that's changing, but. That's pretty much it. All over here, you got it's a few breeders selling birds for some big money, but they win that big race. You know, I, the lottery, you know, you, you enter and you know, you get one here and one there, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get that big one and it pays for all the fees. Yeah. You got all these fees, you need a big one to pay for them. Yeah, lottery is yeah. a, good, a good word to use as an example. There's no <laughs> doubt. Think it's really a lottery, though. Well, a, guy, a lot of guys don't like to hear that, but it's uh, dicey, all right. Now, over there, you know, if you're flying club race in Belgium, they have to pick bird. So you got a bird that's clocking you, you baby it. Don't send it too far, and you could go to club and win money every week. But over here, you send your birds out to another guy. He takes care of them, and they all come in a big whoosh until you get out about 350 miles, and and then they really break them up. It's tough business, but it's a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun over the years. And that's what it comes down to is having some fun and enjoying the birds. I'm starting to get a little older. It's getting harder to get around. I still like them. So I got a small loft and then these other feet into that loft. When I was younger, I had more birds, but some of these guys got 50 foot lofts, put a lot of money. There's a new millionaire guy out that come in uh, the big Tar Heel race. The guy was telling me with a jet, 40 birds in. Wow. You know, from, pretty much buying the race. Well, that's it, right? You know, the more lottery tickets you buy, the better your chances are. <laughs> that, that is it. But, you know, if you got good birds, you still beat them. And that's it. that's it. put up the game. A little guy can uh, compete with a big guy. Basically, you got good birds. Say a quality one loft bird is going to be a different bird than a quality club racing bird. When you say are, if the quality's there, it's there. But generally, that's true. The selection has gone towards performance in the one loft races or well, the club races like Bonnie and Clyde uh they were two they flew best at a two at a two year old 600 miles and so the quality's there nobody like nobody's interested in long distance birds because they normally don't fly very good as young birds but mine do just one first drop third and trap and a, a meter 200 then the next week I won the first drop third and trap 
but the granddaughter of, of Bonnie and Clyde speeds are really fast. So once the quality is there, and that's the problem with breeding pigeons that fly a shorter distance, they really fizzle out on you. So that's why I've always started, even when I was young, I had the long distance pigeons. Because they're real qualities there when you get the good ones. Well, in these other races, you got to have uh, higher numbers. Which is more important, a score sheet or a pedigree? Well, if they <clears throat> pedigrees don't fly, as you know, old saying, you get a lot of birds and they got all kinds of pedigrees. I got pedigrees pulled back a long time. You got to meet them up and then they got to fly. You've got to go to the key birds. Sure, pedigree, you get a pedigree with it. It's good to have a pigeon that the mother and father were both flyers. Now, that isn't a guarantee on that. I, that's, I've got birds bred down a few generations that's been good. But the chances go way down when you're getting birds off of birds or one this and one that. It's best to get them up close as you can. And that is expensive if you go to the best flyers. Like Bonnie and Clyde, I went to the best flyer and got his best birds. It cost me some money. You know, over the years I've spent birds, I've spent Christmas money, pigeons. A lot of times the best birds I ever had were given to me. It's a ch it's chancy, but you got to go through them. You got to, if you got a hundred birds, you know, there's one or two of the best ones. All these guys saying all my birds are, are great. Uh huh. It's simply not. If that was true. It'd be easy. So being, you know, being that you've had this experience in the, uh, in the pigeon world for a while, where do you think, or I guess, where do you see the pigeon happy turn towards right now? You think that it's. Well, it's no doubt one law of races. Yeah. There's no doubt. The old style, the old, the old teams, you know, the old school, they're going out more and more. There's still a lot of guys buying club, big combines back in, back east or California. They still exist. Birds are really valued. But the one loft race, you'd be surprised all of a sudden you got into one of these races and you win a couple hundred thousand bucks. You know, there's always that chance and that excitement of possibly winning the big money. But if you're only in it for money, not a good way to be in it. I got my first pigeons and I got a red checker, you know, and I got a splash. Just being out there and having them and having fun. The only count on winning, then there's more disappointments than there is big winnings. The money in pigeon racing, I feel like, has kind of hurt hurt that side of the hobby when it comes to racing in general because, you know, everybody thinks that their secrets are the secrets and they don't want to help out yeah. these young guys so much, you know, maybe give them some birds, but once they start winning, you know, they get all tight-lipped and... You know, they don't, they don't like oh, that, you know. Oh, the old club flyer and all the little jealousies and things that goes on. It's crazy. My experience is in that line. I got in trouble one time. I was up in the Ogden to a pigeon club, and there was an old timer I liked. I knew for years and years, and I got a stick, and I poked him in the stomach. Gentle and kind of fun. But his son saw it, and, man, I was in some big trouble for that. I got uh, half the club was mad at me. So things go around, around, around. One loft races, you don't get that. So send them out, and they're all happy. You send them your birds and some money. And the club, it's for the younger guys because you got you got to breed them and you got to train them down the road several times. You better go to the club and enter them. And a lot of years you don't do well. I don't care what birds you got, you don't do well. The birds, a lot of times it's fancier. Maybe you got a virus in your in your, uh, your loft or you had a bad toss. I mean, remember. There's so many things that can happen. So one loft race is, is, is going over more and more to that. You can go visit one loft race and watch them come in. You can go over there and watch it. It's fun. We've done that. The bickering and you have in the club. So many stories when I was young in the clubs splitting over up for because of personalities. Start fighting and that's all you hear is the fight. That's no fun. When I was young, I used to take my mother to club. <laughs> so I didn't like no fight. There's negative aspects to the business. But Money, 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 it's always money. It's not only true pigeons. I'm a retired military officer. I'm not wealthy, but I pay the bills. And our settles now. Kids and grandkids and great grandkids. It's all life all about. Friends. Can you tell us about your favorite bird? Oh, it's by far uh, Clyde's. Clyde, a Bonnie and Clyde uh, combos. My favorite bird by far. Oh, there's some beauty. Other be there's some beauties in there. I'll change that. You know, that's really nice, but he's my favorite. They don't come by like that very often. You know, when you get a class bird, you have a foundation bird, something that's reliable. And, and uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who's just getting started into the racing pigeons and, you know, kind of training their birds currently? And Well, 
you you have to get a connected to somebody, a friend or someone else who knows pigeons so you can chat with them. You've always got to have some sort of friends in there to talk pigeons with. Of course, you got to get the best birds. It's best to save up your money and get the good ones, or if you're going to buy it, do that. A lot of times you have friends, and then you get your start there. And if it's a friend, they'll give you your best birds. Those guys go along further. You kind of lose contact with them. And, you know, that's going to be that's going to be a little bit more difficult than too for new flyers with with club racing kind of going away with, uh, with these one loft races. It's kind of faceless. You don't really bump into anybody like you say until the day of the race. Then you guys are all there. So finding a mentor for racing pigeons is going to be a little bit more difficult in that way. There, there's no doubt. But most of the guys they get started with the club. So um, you know, big towns they got the club and you get connected. And then you get the one loft races. But you know, once you're in the one loft races, then in that way, you know, there's a lot of contacts. So especially like now, I sell them and I'll sell them on this guy. I'll help him there how to get along. And usually, some a lot of them buy for the club races. Still. Yeah. Okay. But yes, it's harder. With your loft setups, so you only have about 40 birds right now. Are they all in one loft and then you have one loft dedicated for Bonnie and Clyde? Yeah, I've got about Bonnie and Clyde, it's 12 by 15. I've got to split down the center, put Bonnie and Clyde put in the system, and I'll throw a different bird in there sometimes. When, whatever. And then in my garage, I've got mating in the cages, and the rest are all in one big loft. I got a big aviary, They're always out in the aviary. There's a lot of air. So yeah, I, I like the aviaries. I think that uh, you know, they get that natural sunlight and like you're saying, John, getting some of that fresh air. I think that's good for them. Yeah, yeah. You gotta keep them healthy. You gotta take you gotta give them fresh water every day and fresh grit. It's it's the little things. And you've gotta have them in good shape to ship them out. They gotta <laughs> I won't ship out a bad bird, wasting your, your time and everybody else's time. Yeah, yeah, that's hard on them. That shipping's hard. They got to be pretty, pretty good health to go through that breeding on them. That's that's stressful. They got to be in good health for that. Oh, I've really had some experience. I had one one bird shipped to Vegas. They shipped it back east. I don't know how they managed that. Then it went back, and then they had to ship it back. Then I had two birds from Rick Nanez right off was right off his famous ironclad. I don't know. I ended up at a town near me. We was calling all over. Then I went to Vegas, and finally I found a found a had, I got family down in Vegas, and they sent it there. And then I had my grandkids go chase it down. They says they couldn't find it, and they finally found it a couple of days later. Told them I was going to come down and pick it up. Eleven days, foundation cock, ironclad. You say eleven days? Eleven days, and I didn't think they were alive. <laughs> But they're they're pretty thin when I got them. Wow! But they're beautiful, beautiful birds. Man is, and Rick Nan is one of the biggest flyers in the United States. I was talking to him. Fifty one was lost fifty foot, and I think there was two a month ago. There was an electrical fire, and they both burned down in the middle of the night. And he lost about two million dollars worth of pigeons. Right in his office, he had his good birds, and they both died. Literally oh. put him out, put him out of business. If you put your heart on anything, money or possessions or something, all of a sudden it's gone on one big push. That's life. I wonder if like uh, some of these flyers like Gannis and people who have millions of dollars in birds in their loft, I wonder if you can get an insurance policy. Insurance they policy. Do. And, yeah. Some insurance, you got some insurance on a deal. A lot of times these feeds will go in there. When I was just married, I moved to Walnut Creek, California. And I scraped off for Kendall Strange down there, big million dollar flyer. Yeah, this big German sheep shepherds out in the backyard. Yeah, steal, steal. Yeah, I've heard about that. I've, I've I've seen some different situations where, you know, these guys have pretty high security, you know, on their loft setups and stuff just to kind of prevent that. But you know, yeah, that's they're definitely not twenty five cents for an average bird and seventy five cents for the good ones anymore. <laughs> No, things have changed. A lot of stories. I can tell you on and on and on. The story of what's happened to me. Oh, this has been good. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your experiences with us and, you know, passing down some knowledge and 
I really appreciate the, uh, just to talk about, you know, it's for enjoyment, you know, and you can't let the money, money side of things get, get wrapped up and, you know, yeah. all, this, all the secret keeping that just hurts the hobbies. So, you know, let's just yeah, yeah. do it for enjoyment. Keep a good attitude. Keep a good attitude. You know, do Definitely. good to others. And anybody wants to find out more about the owner of Bonnie and Clyde, you can check out his website at Cordova Lofts. That's plural L-O-F-T-S. CordovaLofts.com. And you can uh, check out his setup that he has over there. Thanks for coming on, John. Appreciate it. Well, you guys have a good evening. May God bless all. Mm-hmm.